Hey there, folks. This is Mitch Firestone with Precision Trading Labs in New York City. Uh, it's February 16th, 2024, and I'm here to bring you some uh, trading levels for the upcoming week of uh, February 20th, 2024. Um, if you notice, I actually said February 20th. Uh, Monday, February 19th is uh, President's Day. So that is a market holiday. So of course, uh, trading will resume on Tuesday. Um, so before I begin, um, the usual kind of disclaimer here, uh, Precision Trading Labs, everything I'm about to present here is for informational and educational purposes only. Uh, we are not money managers nor financial advisors, uh, but we are here to help our subscribers uh, become confident, competent traders and help them gain mad trading skills. So there you go. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to run through uh, some of the market indexes. Um, and I'm going to show you some things that we plotted out last week and then what uh, what transpired since then. And then I'll show you, of course, then what some potential upcoming tra trading levels will be uh, for the new week that will uh, start in uh, three days. So um, this is what we plotted last week uh, for the SPY. Of course, the SPY is the ETF of the S&P uh, 500. So um, this is what we plotted on the, uh, the 9th of, uh, of February. And um, this is an area right here looking at the, uh, we were actually looking at a two hour chart here. And in fact, right, right here, if we look right here, uh, we can see this is where we were at the time. And this was an area that my eye was drawn to. Uh, we're looking again at a two hour chart. Uh, so essentially there are, and I use 130 minutes for that. Um, so there were three candles, of course, for each trading day. Um, and so this is what we were looking at here. And my eye got drawn to this region right here. Um, right here, um, basically buyers and sellers were in agreement within this, within this price range from about 490 to 493 and a half or so. And right here, there was an area of uh, consolidation. And then of course, notice that there was this gap um, and, then, uh, and then kind of a run from there. And so price kind of left here very suddenly during that gap after this period of uh, kind of prices kind of, uh, you know, kind of sh shuffling back and forth uh, within this about uh, two and a half point range in here. And so the expectation was when price returned to this region, uh, we would, th there was the potential to get a bounce out of here. Um, Right, right here, what occurred here, of course, was an exhaustion of sellers. The sellers essentially disappeared from this price range. And so when the, the sellers left, all you had left was potential buyers. And so the thought is when price returned back to this region, there was there might be some some still some buying pressure left in this region. And so this region right here was about one and a half points down from from the close of uh, from last Friday. OK, so that was one and a half percent down. And then underneath here, um, there was another level, a potential trading level, which was based on a 30 minute chart. OK, so this was the um, this was a, a, a two hour level here and this was the uh, 30 minute level here. So this is what we had kind of did during our video last week. Uh, if we now flash forward, uh, we can see, OK, this is where we had uh, plotted the level right there. And then you can see right here. Um, and this this was the early and middle part of the, the week that just concluded. We can see price gap down there came to the to the front door of this level, drilled in here, and then we ended up getting a a pop out of that. And so as a result, uh, our subscribers expressed a, a bullish trade out of there. And of course, the obvious way to express a bullish trade would either either be to buy the spy directly. Uh, at that the front door of that level, or the the most simple uh, you know option position, of course, would be to buy a call. All right, so the, those are the two you know obviously the most elementary ways to express a trade uh, on the spy based on those levels. Okay, so if we now go to the live chart, uh, this is what I just showed you here. So again, there was that 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 area of consolidation. There was that pop. There was that return to that level, and then again we had that. So we had that run here. So now, where are we now? So we're right here, and we had a close here at just about 4.99 uh, and a half. Okay, and so the next level down here, uh, this level already worked once. So generally, we don't go back to it. We don't be go back to a second bite of the apple here. Uh, this was an area of uh, it worked once. We don't necessarily expect it again to work. Um, and so at that point. 
because we're right here, this is an area which we refer to as a demand zone, because essentially the supply of shares available here essentially had disappeared. OK, and we know it disappeared because all of these trades had to occur at higher prices. So there was no supply left here. So if we only have only have demand for shares here, but no supply, well, then we refer to this as a demand zone. And so when price returns to a demand zone and when it works like that, or even if it violates it, uh, in either way, we expect that there is a lower probability that there is still going to be demand left the second time it comes back. Um, so um, we, we would not necessarily be looking on a, a t back to that four, 493 and a half level for this to work again. Consequently, the next level down is that 30 minute level that I showed you in that previous slide here. And in fact, if I um, actually actually sh uh, change the chart here, um, here's the 30 minute level right there. There is a, and this is what's referred to as a rally, a base, excuse me, a rally, a base, and a rally there. Okay, there's the two hour level that I just showed you, which of course now starts to look sloppy now because we have four times as many candles in there. Okay, but there's the two hour level that I showed you. There was that, um, that first test that ended up kind of working quite well there. And so the next thing we would be looking at if we have a pullback would be, a, would, we would look for a pullback back to this 30 minute level. And that's what we would, that would, that would be the basis of uh, our, of our next uh, bullish trade there. Okay. So if we go back here now um, to the two hour, um, here's that line there that kind of shows the distance. And so we're about two and a half percent down from where we are now. So we would essentially need a pullback from about 499 and a half down to about 487. So that's uh, roughly about 12, 12 points on the SPY. And so that's what we would need for this to go back. Um, and that would be our, um, uh, that would be our long trade of in the coming week if that occurs. Um, in terms of uh, short, um, not really looking to short anything here. We, there's really no supply back here. Uh, price is up here. Uh, you know, it could drop from here. Uh, on the other hand, it might just it might just kind of race ahead and go. Um, so there's really nothing for us to push against here. So for the moment, we don't actually see a um, a, a quality um, a, a quality level that would that we would short from. Um, but here, right here, this is the uh, the explanation of what I just gave you, though, in terms of that level there. Okay, so this is a demand zone again, and it's an area of expected upward price pressure created by a brief period of consolidation in a tight range, and then a clear, abrupt exhaustion of sellers. Okay, and that's that. Okay, and then uh, and then we are also looking for a bullish, uh, energetic move out of the level. Okay, and so those are the characteristics of a good demand zone. Okay. And then we'll talk about a supply zone uh, on another chart where there actually is one. Okay. So that's the story with the, um, that's the story with the spy. Uh, if we now go to the Qs, which of course is the ETF of the, uh, the NASDAQ uh, 100. Um, this is what we were looking at again last week. Uh, so there was our close last week at around 437 on the Qs. And more or less, this is kind of a, a similar level it's kind of that 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 the, the cousin of the level that we just saw in the spy. Um, it's kind of sitting here, right here in the queues, okay, as well. So this was a a, a level that was about two percent down, and then right down here, this is kind of the the cousin of that thirty minute level on the spy that I just showed you. Uh, but it kind, of, it kind of shows up as the two hour level here on the queues, and that's a, that was at the time that was about four percent down. OK, so those are the two levels that we were looking at on the queues. And so now if we flash forward here um, again, we had that gap down there. Um, OK, then later in the day, uh, there was this pullback, kind of almost like a near death experience because it almost went entirely through the level. And I'll show you on another chart uh, we we basically place our stop. Uh, just below a demand zone if we're looking to go for a long trade. Um, and so it came right to the bottom of the level, but didn't 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 actually violate it or be, even pierce through it. And then after that, uh, the next day, it gapped out and, and, and went. OK, so if we now go to the live chart here and I go to the uh, the queues, uh, here's where we are uh, today. OK, and this is what I just showed you here. There was that move there. There was our entry. There was our stop. There was there was our, uh, our exit from the trade. 
And, um, you know, most of us uh, just kind of bought a call there. And then, um, so here's where we are right now. So again, as I said before on the spy, we're not looking for this level to work a second time, particularly in light of the fact that it almost it almost got uh, it almost was violated the first time it worked. So we would certainly not be trading off of this again. So the next level down is right here. Uh, it's about two, a little less than three percent down. Okay, so right here we kind of have a drop, a base. And then, and then a rally up there. So this is an area, again, in, this is an area of demand. And we're waiting for a price to pull back here, that, that little less than 3%. And then that would be the foundation of another bullish trade um, out of there. Okay. And then the, the next one down from here, uh, if we shift to the one hour chart uh, right here, uh, there was this rally base. And then notice again, it, there's a very, very energetic uh, move out of that region there. Okay, notice that there's a gap, then we have that green candle, then we have that very, very uh, bullish candle, both uh, long and, and, and closes at the top of its range. And then we have another uh, another couple of shots up there from, from there. And then that's kind of ends that that move there. So really you have, you know, they have this nice move here from about 411 uh, up to about 423, 424. So that's about a 13, uh, a 13 point uh, range on the queues. And of course that would represent about a 3% move. So that would be kind of a nice move to, uh, if we had a pullback, uh, that would be the basis for uh, a bullish trade um, out of that level, okay? And then the next one down here is, is a little less than 5% down. So that's the story with the, uh, with the queues. Um, if we go to the IWM, uh, the IWM is the, uh, the story, is the, um, the ETF, of course, of the Russell 2000. Okay, so um, this is what we were looking at uh, last week uh, on here. And again, um, in fact, this is a good example of a supply zone that had actually worked uh, the week before. Um, so right here, we had a drop, a base, and a drop there. Um, and this is based off of the, the two hours, the, the daily chart then was kind of also we kind of a combination of the daily and the two hour chart. You can see my notation there. Uh, but then you can see price return to that level and then dropped out of that. And so that was the basis of a bearish trade. OK. And so that same narrative that I told you about the um, uh, the demand zone uh, is the same for the supply zone, except, of course, inverted. So this represents over here an exhaustion of buyers and essentially what happened then was um, uh, sellers ra ran down the price chart until they can until they can encounter willing buyers at lower prices, and so at this point, when it, when it, when price returns there, we expected to see some um, some some residual uh, uh, selling pressure that was waiting to be tapped, and then we had, we got that nice move out of there. And so that was the basis for um, for a bearish trade, and of course, expressing the the, the most the, you know the most basic ways of expressing a bearish trade, of course, would either be to short uh, the IWM at that level or to buy a put. Okay, so that's the um, that's the story of where we were last week. So now, if we flash forward to this week of where we are now, so here are the various various trades that we've actually had off of there. Okay. And so right here, this is a good example of when price kind of, this is the one where it dropped out of there. So that that represented one trade there. Notice then price came up here okay, and dropped out of that supply zone here and then dropped into here. And then right here, this is an area where we then had a, a nice bullish trade out of there. Okay, and this is a rally, a base and a rally. Um, this is actually kind of fortuitous. You had three trades. Uh, three zones, they all worked. Uh, needless to say, this is trading. So it would, you know, would I have been surprised to see one or two of them fail? Of course not. It's trading. This is all about probability, but it's doing the same thing right over and over again in the big picture, uh, having things work out. Uh, but it is kind of fun when three in a row kind of work out all at once. So that's where we are. That's where we were last week. So now if we flash forward to um, where we are now, um, as I said before, we really would not be looking to trade this level again 
because it already worked once. And um, it, 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 there's only so much demand left in here. There could be still some demand in here. It's just it's a lower probability trade because we've already been back here once and some of it's already been chewed up. Uh, we can almost think of a, one of the, these zones as a, kind of like a cement wall uh, and you're taking a sledgehammer to it. Uh, every time you hit the wall with a sledgehammer, what does it do? It weakens, of course. And so we kind of take the same uh, view when it comes to a supply or a demand zone, that the first test is best. And then after that, retests, they can work, but they are lower probability. So right now, there's really nothing here um, that's nearby uh, because the next uh, quality demand zone uh, on the uh, on the Russell is down here, and that's about a seven percent pullback. So that's kind of a major. Uh, that's a long way down. So you know, it's it's quite possible that when price returns and if we get some kind of pullback, we end we may end up getting forming some kind of intermediate level here. But for the moment, there really isn't anything, at least in in, in the time frames that I'm looking at. Uh, it's quite possible if you know if you you know zero in on this, there might be something you know in a five minute you know in, in an intraday level in here, uh, but that's uh, that's a different analysis. So I'm kind of focusing uh, for the purpose of this video here on more kind of swing trading, higher time frame levels of you know kind of one hour, two hour versus small intraday levels. All right, so that's the um, that's the um, uh, the story with the Russell. Uh, last thing I'll show on the ETF side are the uh, the bonds so this is the tlt uh this is the um uh the etf of the uh bonds that are 20 years in uh, duration or longer so more or less the 20 and the 30. Uh, okay so this does not include the uh, the 10-year note um so this is the tlt um right here uh this was there was actually a, a tested the supply zone here from before so i'm not going to go into that one here but this is where we this is where we were last week okay and so this is what i was looking at at the time actually that that line is misplaced it really should have been here so that that zone that's above here was probably more about seven and a quarter percent but right here at last week when i was when i did this this was there was a demand zone right here uh a more or less a rally, a base, and a rally here. Uh, that was only about one and a half percent down from where we were at that time on the ninth. Okay, and so if we now uh, shoot ahead here, um, you can see right here at the time uh, it then came down, um, and early in the week on the fourteenth, which was uh, what Wednesday, uh, a couple of days ago, um, this is where it was at the time. So price had come down, hit this level, and had kind of dug in here. Um, so it, at this point, we hadn't really gotten a, a, a solid bounce out of it, but it, it had certainly stopped. Uh, it stopped the price from falling. There's a couple of couple of gaps here, and then it kind of kind of just sort of stopped it at the time. Okay, so if we now go to the uh, the live chart here, so here's here's where we were. So here's what I just showed you over there. Um, on okay, and you can see price. The price had dropped there. Okay. We got we got a, mo a moderate bounce there, and then it it's a, it immediately kind of returned to the level now, and so in fact at the end of this week uh, we actually closed out this trade here. We didn't want to leave it over the weekend, uh, just because a lot of a lot of stuff can happen over the weekend. So we just decided, uh, it, since it's revisiting the zone here, uh, we would just kind of take this off. And of course, if if it opens here again and shows some signs of bouncing out of this level, uh, we might just get back into this trade again. But we just kind of left, took it off for the for the weekend here. So right here, about two percent above, we actually have a supply zone where there's that rally, a base, and a drop there. Okay, so there's a two percent level over here, and then the next real next fresh quality uh, demand zone there is about four percent down from where we are now. And we can see that if I kind of just shoot back on the chart there, and right here. Is that little is that level right here there's a drop a base and a rally there um, and that's in the two hour chart um the move out is 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 somewhat energetic but after that it just kind of grinds up there was certainly that gap um so I'm not necessarily in love with this region but we'll certainly keep an eye on it so that's the uh, that's the TLT um 
last thing that we'll do is we'll now kind of rip through uh, some um, popular trading symbols and we'll look at kind of the uh, the fang stocks uh, or in this this case now we should re probably refer to them as the mang stocks because of course facebook has become meta um so um but we'll take a look at the, a few of those symbols here so here's um here's apple okay so here's where we are on apple so here was the close right now on, on apple it was about 182 and a quarter and so um in terms of w trading levels here uh this is a supply zone here so we have a rally a base and a drop there um, and so if we, in terms of a, a potential bearish trade, um, we would be looking for um, looking for a rally of about a little more than three and a third percent to get up here. Um, and in fact, this would get us up to the let me just put the label on the. Uh, so that would get us up to about one eighty eight and a quarter there. OK, so that would be um, uh, about six points on Apple to go from one eighty two and a quarter to one eighty one eighty eight and a quarter. And that represents uh, about a three uh, three plus percent move. Okay, so that would be the basis for a, a bearish trade of either buying uh, buying a put or, of course, shorting Apple up here. And then down below here, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, in fact, let me get these labels out of here. The clutter. So th there's a there's a three percent uh, le level, about three percent down. And so if I go back right there, um, this is really kind of a drop a base and then notice that rally a little pause then there's another kind of couple of bullish candles and then it kind of races out from there um and so you can see pr the price has not been back there since so this is a fresh level and when, when we when we when we look for our trades we certainly like to trade uh fresh levels for the reason that i just described earlier that uh, every time you go back to a level some of the either supply or demand uh, depending on what you're looking at, uh, is getting chewed up. So that's Apple. Uh, take a look at Google. So here's where we are on Google. Um, we, we ended up closing it around a little, little less than 142 here. And so right here, we have that rally base drop there. Um, this is about 5% away from here, from going from 142 or so to 149. There's that 5%. So we would end up needing a 5% rally to get up there. And then down below here, um, there is a uh, about five and a half percent down here. This is where that rally base rally here is on the two hour chart. And this would be the basis for uh, a bullish trade out of here. Um, over here, this is one that had already worked. OK, it was a rally, a base and a rally there. And notice price came back, uh, kind of, you know, took a little bounce there. It skipped up, came back in, and then kind of raced out of there. So we can think of this now as tested demand or kind of, you know, kind of sloppy uh, support here. Uh, again, we're not really, we're not, we would not really, really be racing to trade this, um, but we kind of make note of it. Um, so that's the story with Google. There's about, again, that's the supply zone. That's about 5% up. Also, one thing that we could, that you can also do if you're, uh, if you're, you know, a little more advanced in some of the option strategies is um, if you, uh, depending on how the chart lays out and how particular options lay out, when you are kind of midway uh, in between uh, supply and demand, that is often a good situation in order to enter an iron, an iron condor, which is the um, essentially having a, um, a vertical credit spread above and a vertical credit spread below. So here in the case of below, you would have a, a bull put a vertical spread. And, um, and, and at above, of course, you would have a bear call vertical spread. And so a lot of times, depending on how, how they're arranged, um, if, if you can actually utilize these zones sometimes to actually protect the short strike, um, you know, it, you know, obviously one has to do the options analysis to see if the distances are right. Uh, but if things are close enough, then in fact, um, it, it represents actually a good, uh, a good technique for entering, uh, entering uh, credit spreads, utilizing, um, utilizing zones to actually protect the short strike. So that's Google. Uh, let's take a look at Netflix. So here we are on Netflix. Um, right here, there was a um, this was a, a tested zone. We had a we had a, um, um, a on the 30 minute chart here. Uh, I'm not going to waste time 
shifting between that. But this was a, a demand zone right here. For the notice price came back and we ended up getting a bounce out of there. So that was actually a, a successful trade that arose uh, from there. And now here's where we are now. Okay, so right here, uh, we actually have a, um, uh, a, daily, a daily supply zone that actually goes back um, uh, basically o o over, a, over a year. This actually goes back to December of 2022 so in fact if i shoot back in time so right there there is our zone and if i turn this back into the daily chart oh excuse me a second this uh, this there will be one second here at the candles got screwed up here for some reason just fix that. All right, so now if we go back on the daily, you can see right there. Price rallies up consolidates up there and then notice that very very bearish move that occurs out of here kind of like a bowling ball falling out of a falling out of a window there um and so again we would be waiting for price to return to that daily supply zone and so that's that's that would be the basis again as as discussed earlier uh, this would be the basis of a uh, a bearish trade and so that's about four and a half percent up from where we closed at 584 uh, that would be obviously this thing would have to rally what about 27 points to get up to uh, to, to that 610 level. Uh, but then at that point, then one could either you know short it or um, you know execute any number of, uh, of bearish trades out of there. Um, so that's where we are on the supply zone uh, for Netflix. And then again, this, since this is already a level that was tested. Um, we would not be looking to, uh, to to go back there again. So the next level down here, that's about 10% down. So that's kind of a long way down. So, but there is one, there is a two hour demand zone sitting at around five, uh, 526 or so. Um, and the last thing, a couple of quickly we'll race through, uh, here's our buddy Elon, here's Tesla. Um, so right here, here is where our close was. Um, so down here, there's a drop, a base, and a rally here. This is a little close, um, and there's really been no great follow through, even though this was a great deal of energy out of here. Um, but I'd be a little cautious. In fact, I'd really be, be cautious about uh, really kind of both levels here. Uh, I'm really not all that impressed uh, with either of these, so I'd be very cautious with this. And then and in particular here, um, you know, this is the origin of a gap. And so, you know, certainly, you know, one could certainly look for, you know, expect, you know, maybe when price gets back here, it might get smacked down again. But there's two things that I'm really very kind of cautious about. One, it's just painfully obvious. It just kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. You know, if, if, if all one had to do is trade the origin of a big gap, uh, trading would be really easy. So, I, I, again, I wouldn't necessarily be expected to automatically this is a license to print money. OK. And then the other thing is, um, and let me just put this on here for a second. This was an earnings gap. You can see that cross there. That signifies that that, that was that was the end of a, that was an earnings announcement. So with, this is also a news driven gap. So this so this is not one that, you know, this was also created by a change of perception it's not just trading and it's not just supply and demand uh this was a like a change of perception here so i for all the above reasons i'm really i'm i'm be very cautious about this level okay <clears throat> and then but but you know having said that if it goes in here and starts to roll over we could certainly look to kind of get in into it um if there's some confirmation but i wouldn't just get into this automatically at the front door when it hits there um, so that's the story on this supply zone here. And then again, I'm not really overly impressed with this demand zone here either. Um, and that's about 6% down there. And then lastly, we will finish off <clears throat> by looking at Amazon. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so right here, here's where we, uh, here's where we closed. Um, and so up here, um, there is a two hour level 
that's sitting about two and two and three quarters percent up at about 2.7 percent um, above there. OK, so there's a there's that level. And then, of course, there's a and if, if that would get if that would fail and get broken through, well, then the next one is actually kind of a long way up. And that's about eight percent. That's about eight percent up. So that's kind of a long, you know, relatively long, uh, long distance here. Uh, if we kind of go back here, and in fact, this is actually a tested supply zone. Now that I'm looking at this, uh, right here we had a rally base and a drop. Notice it's been back here multiple times. So this is really more tested supply, or and we can think of it as resistance. It's really not. It's not a fresh supply zone. So I'm really not in love with this at all. So there's that that two hour zone. So that's about a little less than three percent up. And then below here, there's a two hour level here. In fact, let me just change this quickly to finish off here. Uh, let me actually change that. So right here, we have our rally base and a rally there. We have that that bullish green candle. Then, of course, that massive gap. Now, notice again, I'm not necessarily, I would be cautious with this level as well. Why? Because it's an earnings gap. Um, that, there's that blue cross again. So this is an earnings gap, as it turns out. Uh, the other possible trade here, though, is um, if you notice right here, uh, when we have that gap here, okay, and you notice then there's that kind of drop here, okay, and then there's that wick. Well, right here in between that that bottom wick and the top of that green candle, that's a gap. That's an unfilled gap here. So, in fact, one of the things that we will actually be looking at is if, in fact, we start to get a pullback on Amazon, and if it drives through the low port of, part of this wick, uh, we might actually look to play a breakout uh, to the downside uh, on this. And of course, one could either, as always, short the stock or buy a put. But again, we would, you know, as we know, gaps um, tend to get filled either wholly or in part. Uh, but, it, you know, it may not happen immediately. Uh, but on the other hand, if we do get a pullback and it does start to rip through, and particularly if the market starts to show some weakness, well, then again, this might represent a um, kind of a good uh, a good a breakout level to the downside. Um, and so at the 160 region, a 550 gap, that would represent, what, about a 3% uh, drop in the price of Amazon. So, um, so but anyway, though, so you have that... Um, that that supply zone above here at about two two point seven percent down, we have that that demand zone here with the, with the the caveat that I just kind of gave you that I'm not I'm I'm a little cautious about it because it's an earnings gap, um, so but we'll keep an eye on that. And again, there's also that potential breakout trade uh, over here. So there you go. That's what I got here. So. Uh, thank you for the privilege of your time. Uh, I hope you found this interesting. I hope you found this helpful. Um, a couple of things, though, before we go. Um, one, first of all, if you liked what you saw and you found this interesting, we ask that you uh, subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel. Give us a like. And also, um, there's a, a link to schedule a call. And uh, I would be delighted to, to schedule a brief call with you and tell you a little bit more about the uh, supply and demand concept and how we can util utilize uh, this whole thing to uh, create high probability uh, controlled risk trades. All right. So, again, thank you very much for joining me. This is Mitch Firestone with Precision Trading Labs, and I will see you guys next time. Take care. Bye bye.